Welcome back to another installment of Zack Swap's a gigantic motor into a shitbox from the 70s. So, this is part two of this adventure. How many parts will there be? I have no idea. But, I do know this one thing. By the third episode, you're gonna get a dino session. Engine dino. When filming the first episode, I realized that I didn't give any setup as to what the hell I'm doing or why I'm doing it. I guess I got a little lost in the sauce of the realization that I'm finally gonna have a 572 cubic inch big block in a Chevy truck. Uh, a dream of mine since I was a teenager, mostly thanks to Stacy David's Copperhead build on the old show Trucks. Anyway, here's the what. I got this 1978 K5 Jimmy here. I'm gonna shove a 572 cubic inch big block into it. It's got a fully built 4L85E and NP205 transfer case from Gearstar. And I had Curry Enterprises rebuild the front and rear diffs on this thing. And Driveshaft Pro made us some really beefy front and rear drive shafts. We completely rewired the truck with a painless performance wiring harness. And also the boys from Vintage Air came out and helped me install a brand new Vintage Air AC system and front runner kit, which we're gonna be transferring over to the new engine. It's got stock ass old suspension and brakes, and there's absolutely no way to connect the seat belt, so there are none, essentially. So look, the whole goal of this thing is to at least get one nasty four wheel drive burnout out of it before it grenades a bunch of driveline parts, and then we gotta just go into a whole nother year's worth of chassis and suspension build stuff. But we'll get to that. So here's what you're gonna see on the first couple episodes. While I'm fumbling about trying to get the old motor out of this thing and the new one in, my buddy Jacob over at Smetting Performance in Texas, he's gonna show you how he built this motor. That's right, I had him painstakingly film and explain every single part of that engine build process so you guys could learn a thing or two from these episodes. You're welcome. Oh yeah. So if you're wondering about the scene change here, we're obviously at uh, storage area for Hoonigan Racing Division. Now, brought the Jimmy in, popped the hood off, pulled the old engine out. It went a little something like this. So yeah. I figured I wouldn't bore you with all that stuff because you've seen it a million times. And let's get down to the good stuff. Well, here it is in the flesh. Wait, 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 hold up. I think I might've gotten a little ahead of myself there. You still haven't seen this engine go together. I think the prudent thing to do is to cut back to Jacob over at Smetting Performance and watch this short block go together. Maybe even the long block. Let's go. Hey there, how's it going? Jacob here with Smetting Performance in Texas. Last time you saw me, I was balancing the crankshaft and honing the engine block for Zach's 572. And today, I'm gonna go over all of the components that we're going to use in this engine, as well as actually assemble it all into the Dart Big M engine block. We have a 4.25 stroke, one piece rear main seal, big block Chevy crankshaft, this crankshaft is forged out of 4340 non-twist forging steel. It's internally balanced and it is a very high quality, very strong piece. Coupled with our massive, I can't even grab it right, 4.630 bore piston with a little dome on it is going to give us 572 cubic inches. These pistons are custom made by JE for us. They feature a 2618 alloy aluminum, which is very high strength and crack resistant. They are coated. They have anti-detonation reliefs on them, massive valve relief for the big cam, which we'll get to later. And then what's also really nice is we have a super thin 043 top ring. And because that top ring is so thin, one, it's lightweight, and two, it's very flexible and can conform to the bore as the engine is running. That thinner ring is also low friction, of course. To sort of illustrate just how big this bore is, this piston ring on the table is a four inch bore, regular small block Chevy top ring. And in my hand is the 043 super thin 572 ring. And that ring easily fits outside of the Chevy four inch bore. And let me show you the thickness difference. Moving up from the crankshaft, we have our H-beam, also 4340 forged steel connecting rod, ARP 8740 rod bolts. These are the same rods we use in our blower engines, which make substantially more horsepower and torque. So these are gonna be perfect for Zach's naturally aspirated 572 build. Another really trick piece we use in our big block builds 
is normally oil comes through this galley up to the camshaft and has a single hole in the bearing to provide lubrication for the cam. However, we use these very nice coated bearings that actually have a groove cut all the way in the back of them. And then they have three holes that feed oil to the cam bearing. So oil comes in from the galley, hits the back of that groove, and then fully circles the bearing, providing lubrication from three different points of contact. This is needed and required for builds like this with very large camshafts that run heavy spring pressure to help provide bearing lubrication and keep everything happy. Also speaking of bearings, we are gonna be running coated um, tri-metal race bearings in this engine on the mains and the rods. We're using a half groove. So the other side of the main bearings are solid like these. And we only have the half groove on one side to help keep windage down and keep everything happy. Here's our timing set for the engine. We've upgraded to a roller bearing, which is gonna help cut down on friction inside of the engine. This is the brain of Zax 572, and it is a comp cams billet steel hydraulic roller. This cam is 255 degrees of intake duration and 267 degrees of exhaust duration on a 109 lobe separation angle. Lift comes in at 632 inches on both the intake and exhaust. And this thing is just gonna be absolutely wicked. Can't wait to hear it on the dyno. Before I start building the engine, so I'm going to completely clean the cylinder bores and every bearing surface on the block. Then I will install the cam bearings, set the ring gap, check bearing clearance. And once everything is perfect and ready to go, we can start assembling the components. The rod bearings that I use in these engines has a chamfer on the side of the bearing that goes up against what's called the fillet of the crankshaft. That gives the rod extra clearance, you can see right in there, so that the rod and the beam can freely move up against the crankshaft and around while the engine is running. Cam bearings are in, main bearing clearance is set, rod bearing clearance is set, piston rings are gapped. So starting with the camshaft, I'm gonna start building this thing. The reason I put the cams in dry first so I can freely check that the cam bearings are totally straight and in line with each other. Then I'll push the cam out just a little bit and loop all the lobes and the five journals. The fifth main cap on a big block contains the thrust bearing and you can kind of see it poking through. But what the thrust bearing does is controls the fore and aft play of the crankshaft. It's very important that the cap and the block thrust surfaces are perfectly parallel and one's not stepped in front of the other. So I will lightly snug this down with an impact and then using a large drift, I'm gonna hammer the rear and the front of the crankshaft to move that main cap to be perfectly parallel with its engine block mate. Then come back, torque the main cap, and we'll check to see how much thrust clearance we have inside of the block. Perfect amount. Now the thrust is good. Go ahead and torque the rest of the main caps.
Because our wrist pin penetrates through the oil groove, we first install a steel support shim that gives the oil ring support where the wrist pin goes through. With how many cubic inches this engine has, we obviously need a set of massive cylinder heads to help support that many inches and flow enough air to make the horsepower we wanna make. That's where we turned to Airflow Research and their 335cc fully CNC ported big block Chevy cylinder heads. These heads are cast out of Virgin A356 aluminum. They have the 335cc intake runner, which flows over 400 CFM. They have 135 cc exhaust runners, which are actually raised up 3 eighths of an inch to give the exhaust port a much more natural flow to help keep the velocity high. These heads also have massive 2.3 inch intake valves and 1.88 exhaust valves, fully CNC'd 121 cc chamber, and they came equipped with pack double valve springs. Before I can bolt those heads on the engine, I need to find top dead center of the number one piston so we can make sure our harmonic balancer and timing pointer are adjusted to work together. Now that the harmonic balancer, timing cover, and very nice Moroso timing pointer, which is adjustable, are installed, I'm going to find top dead center of cylinder number one and adjust this pointer to line up exactly with the harmonic balancer. So when we go to set ignition timing in the engine, it's exactly where it needs to be. Right there is the top of the piston. And then we'll set this pointer to line up exactly with zero degrees. The lifters I'm going to use are from comp cams. They are a hydraulic short travel design, which means Zach will have zero valve train adjustments necessary. And these will run for many, many miles with no problem. At this point, we would consider the long block completely sealed up and ready to dyno. I'll put the valve covers on, the Holly Sniper, our distributor, and next time you see me in this engine, we're gonna be in that room making some noise. It's gonna be great. See you guys next time. Here's what we're gonna do. Drop it in with the forklift and hope nothing goes wrong. And today is dyno day.